Hello, everyone. Welcome to our weekly podcast. This week is the second week of the 2018 Winter Olympics. Hence, we want to quote about a winter sport, which in this case is ski jumping. In this sport, ski jumper slides steadily down an acceleration slope called the in run to speed up until taking off at a near flat ramp. Then flies about 100 meters over the downhill snow strip before landing near the so-called K point. We want to recreate this whole action in our minimalist Python setup for fun, and to understand a couple of interesting questions with respect to the characteristics of these jumping hills. Okay, we start coding by importing the usual Python libraries: the matplotlib, numpy, maths, and time. And the g-force as well as minus 9.8. Okay, and then we need to incorporate the parameters of the jumping hill, and we'll explain these quantities with a graph. All right, so this is the jumping hill, and here is the jumper, the skier. All right, and that's the distance of jumping, roughly 100 meters. And this is the angle, right? Roughly 35 degrees. And that is the in run. However, we can't have a detailed model of the in run using a simplistic model. So we have simplified our model to just three sections of straight lines. That's the ramp. That's the in run. And that's the slope. And that's the height of the in run, and that is the height of the ramp, which is 100 meters. And this is the distance in of the in run, and the length of the ramp, and the length of the slope. And. We add some helper lines, and that's the angle of the in run, which is similar to the angle of the slope, but not exactly the same. And for the ramp, we rate it as zero degrees, and that is the approximation of the real thing, but it's accurate enough for our test purposes. Okay, we're now calculating. The tangent of this、uh, of the two angles, the cosine of the two angles, and the sine of the two angles. Right, these are very useful quantities to be calculated for once because the, these angles never change, so we do not need to recalculate them. Now, we just need to draw the track. Right, we want to re replicate the green curves, but、well, apparently we need to draw the three sections of the three、uh, straight lines instead of the, the curved green lines. So let's draw the first section.、Right. We start from the top with the x equals zero and the height being the height of in run, and also then the beginning of the ramp.、And、now we draw the ramp by adding the length of the ramp to the x, and also draw the height of the ramp. And now we add the end point, which is the bottom of the slope on the bottom right corner.、Okay. By connecting them, we get the third section,、right. and then we、we'll、plot the whole track.、Right. Oh, there's a missing bit. I will check.、Uh, we just need to check the code. Ah, yeah, spelling mistake. Okay, now we get the last section. Now we do the real bit, and we use the same trick as before. That we do the ski, and then we ski bit by bit.、Right. So first of all, in the ski, we start with at the highest point, right at the top of the in run. And we give it an initial speed of apparently zero, right? And we use 0.02 second for our bit of skiing.、Right. 
and that's the usual loop, right? Before we reach the maximum distance, which is on the rightmost corner of the screen, we just loop, we keep on ski a bit in every loop. Right? And then we plot the X and Ys of the skiing person. Okay. Right. Now we need to do the ski a bit function, which is the meat, meaty part of this program. Right. First of all, we take in positions and speed and the time bit, and think about it. What the output should be. Right. That's the function, and it takes in something, and we use the function in an iterative manner. We in the loop, right, and therefore the return must be equal to the parameter. And therefore we return exactly the same quantities, but obviously uh, they will be processed. And we do the same in the loop. And you can see that we can return multiple things in Python, and that is a Pythonic way of returning a function, which is called a tuple. Right. Okay, so between the start and end of this function, we calculate a new position and a new pair of speed for x and y. Right. By default, we only have the gravity force, right, the g force, and therefore the g axis is zero, right, and if the skier is still on the in run, right, we do something. And if the skier is on the ramp, we do something else. Right? And if the skier starts to fly, and we also need to test whether we are still flying. Right? And finally, if we reach to the bottom of the, f the flat surface, we do something else, right? Okay. Now suppose that we have done all of the above, right? And we just need to update our new positions. So we use the familiar, the second law of Newton. Right? And that's the acceleration. And that's the updating of the speed. We use the leapfrog way of integrating the steps. Okay both an x y, you see that they are exactly the same. Right, now we need to treat these different conditions in a different manner, because sometimes we are in touch with the surface, and therefore we have a normal force and the g-force, right? And the normal force is mg cos alpha, And further, we can decompose that into an fx and fy, which we'll use to synthesize the acceleration on the x and y uh, axes. Right, so that we can see that we have now the expressions for the gx and gy. process the on the ramp bit. Okay, so on the ramp, what do we get? There's only the g-force exerted on the object, i.e. The, the skier. And fx is zero. So gx is zero, and gy is also zero because we get the support, which is the normal force, cancelling out the g-force. Now, there is an approximation that we have to make. Right? In real scenario, it's a smooth curve here. But we have to approximate by taking the speed on the ramp to be equal to the speed just before the ramp. 
to emulate the effect that we have not lost any speed because of the change of direction of travel. And apparently we have a zero vertical speed, so we enforce that straight away. And now, it's the flying bit, that's the excitement. Okay, see, we're on in the sky and we land at a certain point on the slope. Right? And to calculate, to judge whether we are actually still flying or we have landed, we can just find if the angle that we have is actually larger or smaller than the angle on the slope. So we have the slope height at position X, and we just calculate the distance slope minus position X times the 10 left slope. If our position Y is higher than that, apparently we are flying. Otherwise, we must have landed because we cannot go inside the slope. If it's in the sky, there's not much to do because we are just go free, right? There's only the G-force exerts on, on us. Otherwise, we have landed and therefore, it's the same slope dynamics that we processed as before, shown in the green box there. All right, slope landed. Okay, the only difference is that we, we need to use the new cosine and sine values of the slope rather than of the in run gang angle. And we can also calculate the angle of attacking or angle of landing by using the subtraction of the two angles. One is the angle of the speed, one is the angle of the, of the slope. And similarly, we can calculate the total distance jumped by calculating the Cartesian distance between the two points. The square root of that, yes. And we get a new speed. Yeah, using the same principle of approximation. And we decompose that into a bit X and Ys. And also we need to process this extra condition such that if the angle of landing is too small, we don't we do not treat it as a landing. Okay, now we've processed that. We just need to treat the final element, ele final leg of our simulation. If we're on a flat surface, and we'll just take over the speed and map it onto the x axis, and then zero out the vertical speed. So now we're done. Okay, let's try. Oh, looks like it has a plausible path. Let's do it slower. Okay. And we just check the, check the speed and the meters that we've jumped. It seems to too large. Right. So, what's the problem? One, there's no friction on the surface. And second, there's no air drag. So we need to add them. Right. The dragging is a very complex topic, as well as friction, but we can take some simplistic approaches just to approximate the effect of dragging. Right. So you see that we've added, we are now adding the arrow drag proportionate to the g-force, which is an oversimplific simplification. In fact, it was actually proportional to the square of the speed. Yeah. Okay. 
And now, do we need a friction term here after we landed? I don't think so. Right. Now we are getting numbers that are much more sensible to an, uh, to an Olympic style. Hmm. Yeah, so that's reasonable. Test again. That's good. Right. Now we're facing the question. Right. So given a certain slope of the in-run, does it matter if we vary the angle of the in-run? Let's test. It looks like the final speed and the distance of jumping won't change. However, for the angle of this second slope, it does matter because you can see that if we have the angle too sharp, that will result in a possibly fatal jump. more values of trial. Yeah, that's just a little jump because the slope is just too shallow. Okay, so we've changed the value back to some sensible values. Remove all the decorations. And we have a safe and sound jumping. And thanks for watching.